By the end of this video, you're going to be familiar with the story behind the numbers of Pal Talk Inc. And the Sage Seeds AI won't stop talking about it. Let's dive in so that your wisdom can blossom. Goodwill, which comes from acquisitions over time, is just about a quarter of all assets. That's a little bit on the high side, so this company definitely likes acquisitions. The ratio of total assets to total liabilities is over six. A weird situation for it to get that high. Income statement. Revenue has actually decreased by about 30%-ish, meaning that this company went from an operating profit to a substantial operating loss. Luckily, they have so much cash on hand from what we just saw in the balance sheet that this is not a concern just yet. Statement of cash flows. While the income statement swung to a loss, their amortization of intangible assets has done something quite interesting. It is multiplied by almost five. In conclusion for the opening move, we're going to peer into the high levels of amortization. There's now an explanation of what their intangible assets are. Now amortization, the thing we're really interested in, is the change in intangible assets over time. So we're going to start at the beginning and try to understand what the different categories of intangible assets are. 4.2-ish is internally developed software and 3.5 is something called customer relationships. Now these are the customer relationships that they've acquired through acquisitions. <coughs> As you can see, the company in 2022 versus 2021 had their carrying amount go from this number to a much higher number. The difference is around, yeah, 900,000. You can also see that this accumulated amortization divided by the gross carrying amount will give you a percentage. And without necessarily having to do the exact calculation, customer relationships is going to be the highest ratio between amortization and carrying amount. In other words, this carrying amount burns down faster than for any of the other types of intangible assets. Since one of the bigger changes was how much more subscriber customer relationships they've acquired in the last year, that explains to a large extent why their amortization increased so rapidly. What we were seeing on the income statement was the cost of the acquisitions having knock-on effects besides just the initial purchase price. Back at the cash flow statement, we now know a little bit more about this large amortization number. It's also going to stay this high for at least the next year. If they continue to do acquisitions, which it looks like they're very much interested in doing, Overall, this is going to increase the amount of cash that can be taken out of the business. However, as large as it is, it's nothing compared to the swing from positive net income to negative net income. That big swing, the very first thing we noticed in the income statement, isn't really being overcome by any of the rows between net income and net cash used. Hey, if you're getting more comfortable uncovering the stories behind the numbers, please like and subscribe. Some people might remember my very first video was an example of a company buying customers and it working fantastically. Here now we're looking at buying customers and is it really the best use of time and resources? It's not making a difference any more than a small dent. Fundamentally, this business needs revenue. It's claiming that what it needs for that revenue is customers. These acquisitions might have enough time in order to start paying off because of how high cash is. I'm guessing that's what seems to be the story in the exec executives' minds. We trust our business. We have to hold out. Let's try to purchase more customers through acquisitions while we wait. We're now going to bring in the Sage Seeds AI. Acquisitions, some management think that that's the main role of the C-suite. Certainly, once you get to the point that the business is operating smoothly, there's a lot of strategic priority often placed into evaluating the competitive landscape. And if you can have the Midas touch, so to speak, an executive team of a string of high quality acquisitions can completely transform the trajectory of a business, both for very positive, but sometimes for negative as well. This live video chatting streaming service uh, type apps are everywhere all over the place there's a lot of potential acquisitions out there and it's a very very fragmented market i'm sure 
I can also say, looking at the annual report, that this company is swinging for the fences. They can either hit that home run or get a big sloppy strike. But either way, they've already swung. Please like and subscribe. The Sage Seeds AI is going to reveal where this company ranks in the 2022 season now. Please pause the video and try to guess if this is going to rank high or low. It also helps tremendously to explain your reasoning to someone if you are able. PALT is ranked dead last, 464 out of 464 in value for the 2022 season. The very bottom of all the companies the AI has been able to get in as input. I'm now going to explain what the AI seems to be picking up on. We said they had already swung and swung they had. It's too early. Let's just get that out of the way. It's too early to say acquisitions are so complex that you can't evaluate it in just one year. But what has happened in the first year of this acquisition is not pretty. Maybe it's a quirk of our Sage Seeds AI, but what it is seeing is a business, a software business that was plugging along making some money. One of the big positives before this acquisition was that it didn't really require much money. You kind of have already built the software and so you're just kind of not putting in a lot more cash, just making money. That's a good business. And then all of a sudden, an acquisition way larger than anything that is an expense beyond this acquisition comes out of nowhere, soaks up a ton of cash, and revenue does not really budge. Expenses change, they get rearranged, but revenue does not budge. And that is the key point. And we could argue that Sage Seeds AI is just not very optimistic, that it's not understanding the strategic purpose of the acquisition. But I mean, there's all these sorts of slideshows that bankers are certainly presenting to management teams about why you have to believe in the acquisition beyond just these simple calculations. And all of that is very legitimate and possible in this have just been asked to fund a big acquisition and in the best case we're still left just hoping for a positive result to materialize in the future. Sage Seeds AI claiming that there has been zero evidence that that acquisition is yielding money. That's how a software business that honestly makes money ranks lower than a lot of companies we've been seeing in this season so far that don't even try to make money and yet are ranking higher than this. This business might be trying to make money, but it's also showing itself very willing to jump on acquisitions. And that's the sort of game that is less about economic value and more about stringing together a run of good luck. Thanks for watching until the end. Let me know your reaction to this. Is the AI being too harsh on Pal Talk? There is more than one book out there celebrating a management that retrospectively looks like a genius after stringing together lots of acquisitions. But for every book that gets written celebrating you, how many businesses don't string together the lucky streak? When you get the chance, please share your wisdom, share this video.